Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's coverage here live on the floor at AWS ReMars 2022. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Great event, machine learning, automation, robotic space, that's Spence Mars. It's part of the re-series of events, reinvents the big event at the end of the year, reinforced security, ReMars. Really intersection of the future of space, industrial, mm -hmm. automation, which is very heavily DevOps and machine learning. Of course, machine learning, which is AI. We have Luis Says here, who's the CEO, co-founder of Octo ML, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much for having me in the show, John. Yeah. So, we've been following you guys. You guys are a growing startup funded by Madrona, Venture Capital, one of your backers. You guys are here at the show, okay? This is a small, I, mean, I would say small show relative to what it's going to be, mm -hmm. but a lot of robotics, mm -hmm. a lot of space, a lot of industrial kind of edge, but machine learning is the centerpiece awesome. of this trend. Mm -hmm. You guys are in the middle of it. Tell us your story. Absolutely, yeah. So our, our mission is to make um, machine learning sustainable and accessible to everyone. So I say sustainable because it means we're going to make it faster and more efficient, you know, use less human efforts, and accessible to everyone, accessible to as many developers as possible, and also accessible on any device. Right, so we are, uh, we started from an open source project that began at the University of Washington, where I'm mm -hmm. a professor there as well, and several of the co-founders were PhD students there. <laughs> we started with this open source project called Apache CVM mm -hmm. uh, that had actually contributions and collaborations from Amazon and a bunch of other, the, you know, uh, big, big tech companies. Um, and that allows you to get a machine learning model on, and run on any hardware, like run on CPUs, GPUs, various other GPUs, accelerators, and so on. There was a kernel um, of, our, um, of our company, and the project's been around for about six years or so. The company's about three years old, uh, and we grew from you know, Apache TVM into a whole platform that essentially supports any model on, on any hardware, cloud and edge. So. so is the thesis that when it first started that you want to be agnostic on platform? Agnostic on hardware, that's right. Hardware, yeah. hardware. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What was it like back then? I mean, what, were you, what kind of hardware were you talking about back then? Because um, a lot's changed, certainly on the silicon side. Absolutely, yeah. So tell, take so, me through the journey. Uh, like, absolutely, Because I can great, see the progression, yeah. I'm connecting the dots here. So once upon a time, yeah, no, <laughs> do we, do we? <laughs> I walk in the snow with my bare feet. You have to feet. be careful, because if you All wake right. up the professor in me, then you're going to be here for two <laughs> okay, hours, right. you know, so. Fast no, the abridged, the abridged version here yeah. is that, you know, clearly machine learning model, uh, so, yeah. machine learning has shown to actually solve real interesting, you know, high value problems, and then, and where machine learning runs, in the end it becomes code that runs on different, uh, on different Harder, right? Yeah. So, and when we started Apache TVM, which stands for Tensor Virtual Machine, yeah. uh, you know, at that time we were just beginning to start using GPUs for real for machine learning. We already saw that with, with a bunch of machine learning models popping up, and CPUs and GPUs starting to be used for machine learning, it was clear that the they that there would be opportunity to run on everywhere. And, right? they, so and GPUs were coming fast. GPUs were coming, and huge diversity of CPUs, of GPUs, and accelerators now. And uh, the ecosystem and the system software that maps you know, models to hardware is still very fragmented today. Right, so hardware mm -hmm. vendors have their own specific stack, so NVIDIA yeah. has its own software stack, you know, and the, mm -hmm. so does Intel and AMD. And honestly, I mean, I, mean, I, I hope I'm not being uh, you know, too controversial here to say that it kind of looks the, like the mainframe era. We had <laughs> tight okay. coupling, tight coupling between hardware and software. You know, if you bought yeah. IBM hardware, you had to buy IBM OS and IBM database, and IBM applications, yeah. it's all tightly yeah. coupled. And if you want to use IBM software, you had to buy IBM hardware, right? So that's kind of like, what machine learning systems look like today. If you, if you want to buy a certain you yeah. know, big name GPU, you've got to use their software. Even if you use their yeah. software, which is pretty good, you have to buy their GPUs, right? So, but you know, we, we wanted to help peel away the model and the software infrastructure from the hardware to give people choice, the ability to run yeah. the models um, where it best suits them, right? So that includes yeah. picking the best instance in the cloud that's going to give you the right uh, you know, cost properties, performance properties, or might you want to run it on the edge, you might run it on an accelerator. So, what so. year was that roughly? When, that, when we, you're going through this. We started this. that project in 2016, 2015, 2016. Yeah, so that was pre-conventional wisdom. I think TensorFlow wasn't even around yet. No, it wasn't. It was I think, in like 2017 or so. Right. So that was the beginning of, okay, this is opportunity. AWS, I don't think they had released the, some of the Nitro stuff that the Hamilton was working on. Right. So they were, they were already kind of going that way. It's right. kind of like converging. Yeah. The space was happening, exploding. Right. And, and the way that was dealt with, and to this day, you know, to a large extent as well, is by backing machine learning models with a bunch of hardware specific libraries. And we, want, we weren't some of the first ones to say, like, you know what, let's take a compilation approach. Take a model and compile it to very efficient code for that specific hardware. And what underpins all of that is using machine learning for machine learning code yeah. optimization, right? Yeah. So, but it was way back when. We can talk about where we are <laughs> now today. Now let's so. fast forward. So that we're getting yeah. what, so that's, that was, that's the beginning of the open source project, right? So. But that was a fundamental, um, 
belief, worldview there. I mean, you have a worldview that was, that was logical when you compare it to the mainframe, but not right. obvious to the means machine learning community. So, right. okay, good, good call, check. Yeah, check. Now let's fast forward, okay, evolution, we'll go through the speed yeah. of, the, of the years. More chips are coming, you got GPUs, and seeing what's going on in AWS. Wow, now it's booming. Now I got unlimited processors, I got silicon on chips, I got G, G uh, everywhere. Right. Yeah, and what's interesting is that the ecosystem got even more complex in fact, like, because now you have a bunch, there's a cross product between machine learning models, frameworks like TensorFlow, PyTorch, Keras, and Maxide, and so on, and then hardware targets. So how do you navigate that? What we want here, our vision is to say, folks should focus, folks, people should focus on getting yeah. their making the machine learning models do what they want to do that solves a value, like solves a problem of high value to them, right? So, and all the deployment should be completely automatic. Today it's very, very manual to a large extent. Yeah. So once you're serious about deploying a machine learning model, you got to go and understand where you're going to deploy it, how you're going to deploy it, and then, and, you know, pick out yeah. the right libraries and compilers. And we automated the whole thing in our platform. This is why you see the tagline, the boots right there, yeah. like bringing DevOps agility for machine learning, because our mission is to uh, make that fully transparent. Well, right? I think so. that, first of all, I, I use that line here, because I'm looking at it here on live on camera, people can't see, but um, it's like I use it on a couple, couple of my interviews, because the word agility is very interesting because yeah. that's kind of the, the test right. on any kind of approach these days. Agility could be, and I talked to the robotics guys, um, just having their product be more agile. I yeah. talked to Pepsi here just before we came on, they had this large scale data environment because they built an architecture that, that fostered agility. Mm -hmm. So again, this is an architectural concept, it's a systems view of agility being the out, output. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and removing dependencies, which I think what you guys were trying to do. Let's say, yeah, hey. only part of what we do, right? So agility means a bunch of things. First, yeah. you know, um, yeah, today it takes um, a couple of months to get a model from when the model is ready to, to production. We're going to turn that into hours. Mm -hmm. Agile, literally, physically agile in terms of all <laughs> clock time, right? So, and then the, the other thing is give you flexibility to, to choose where your model should run. Right, so in our, um, in our deployment, including the demo and you know, uh, the platform expansion that we announced yesterday, you know, we give the ability of getting your model and you know, get it compiled, get it optimized for any instance in the cloud and automatically move it around. Today that's not the case, you have to pick one instance and that's what you do and then you might auto scale with that one instance, right? So mm -hmm. we, we give uh, the agility of actually running and scaling the model the way, the way you want and the way it gives you the right SLAs, right? So. Yeah, and I think Swami was mentioning that, kind, not specifically that use case, for you, but that use case generally, mm -hmm. that scale being moving things around, making them faster, not right. having to do that integration work. Scale and run the models where they need to run. Like suddenly you want to have a large scale deployment in the cloud, you want to have models in the edge for various reasons because um, speed of light is limited, we cannot mm -hmm. make light faster, mm -hmm. so yeah, you know, yeah. you've got to have some, <laughs> look, that's the physics there, you cannot change, right? There's privacy reasons, you want to keep data locally, not yeah. send it around, so you want to run the model <laughs> locally, right? So. Um, Anyways, uh, well, Luis, and give the, the flexibility, Well, this right, is a good so. point. Let me jump in real quick, because I want to ask a yeah. specific question, because you made me think of something. So, we were just having a data mesh conversation, and one of the comments that's come out of a few of these data as code conversations is, data is the product now. So if you can move data to the edge, yeah. okay, which everyone's talking about, why move, you know, why move uh, data if you don't have to, but I can move a machine learning algorithm to the edge. Exactly. Because it's costly to move data. Right. I can move compute, everyone knows that but now I can move machine learning to the anywhere else and not worry about integrating on the fly. So the model is the code. Right, it yeah. Is, so it is the product. Yeah, and since you said the model is the code, okay, now, 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 now we're talking even more here. So machine learning models today are not treated as code, by the way, so do not have any of the typical properties of code mm -hmm. that you can, you don't, Whenever you write a piece of code in random cloud, you don't know, you don't even think what is the CPU, you don't think where it runs, what kind of CPU yeah. it runs, what kind of instance yeah. it runs. But with machine learning model, you do. So what we are doing, you created this fully transparent, automated way of allowing you to treat your machine learning models if you were a regular function that you call, and then a function could, could run anywhere, yeah. right? So, and that's, that's why that's you see bringing DevOps agility, that's right? That's better. Yeah, and you can and use your existing teams. it's better because I can teams. run on the Artemis too, in space. Yeah. You, you could, yeah. <laughs> if they have hardware. <laughs> so you, and that allows you to run your existing Continue using your existing DevOps infrastructure and, and your existing people, right? Okay, so, so I have to ask you, because since you're a professor, okay. and you're, this is like a master class on theCUBE, thank you for coming yep. on. Um, professor, um, <laughs> I'm a hardware guy, I'm building hardware for you know, Boston Dynamics, the Spot yeah. the Dog, it's the diversity in hardware, it's, it tends to be purpose driven. Right. You know, I got a spaceship, I'm going to have hardware yeah. on there. Right. Um, it's generally um, viewed in the community here that everyone I talk to and other communities, open source is going to drive all software, mm -hmm. that's a check. But the scale 
and integration is super important, and they're also recognizing that hardware is really about the software. And they even said it on stage, here. Right. It's hardware is not about the hardware, it's about the software. Yeah. So if you believe that to be true, then your model checks all the boxes. Well, keep, the, are people getting this? Uh, I think they're starting to, here's why, right? <laughs> so a lot of companies that were hardware first that thought about software too late aren't making it, right? So, I mean, so there's, a, there's a large number of hardware um, companies, AI chip companies that aren't making it, probably some of them that won't make it, unfortunately, just because they started thinking about software too late, right? So, um, in, you know, I'm so glad to see a lot of the early, I hope I'm not just tooting our own horn here, but mm -hmm. Apache TVM, the infrastructure that we yeah. built, to map models to, hard, to different hardware, it's very flexible. So we see a lot of emerging chip companies like SEMA.ai has been doing fantastic work mm -hmm. and they use Apache TVM to map algorithms to their hardware and there's a bunch of others that are also using Apache TVM. That's because you have you know, uh, an open infrastructure that keeps it up to date with all the machine learning frameworks and models and allows you to extend to the chips that you want. Right? So these companies pay attention to that early, gives them a much higher fighting chance, I would well, say. Well, first of all, not only are you backable by the VCs because you have pedigree, you're a professor, you're smart, and you get good recruiting. I don't know, I don't know about the and, smart and, fights. And, and you get good recruiting for PhDs out of University of Washington, which is not too shabby computer science department. Um, but they want to make money. Right. The VCs want to make money. Right. So you have to make money. So what's the pitch? How do, what's the business model? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so share us what you're thinking there. Yeah, the value of using our solution is shorter time, shorter time to value for your model from months mm -hmm. to hours. Second, you shrink operator uh, OPEX because you don't need a specialized expensive team. Talk about expensive, expensive. Yeah. Engineers can understand machine learning, hardware, and software engineering to deploy models. So like you don't need those teams if you use mm -hmm. this automated solution, right? So uh, then you reduce that and also um, in the process of actually getting a model and get it specialized to the hardware, making hardware aware, we're talking about a very significant performance improvement that leads to lower um, to lower cost of deployment in the cloud. We're talking about very significant reduction in costs in, in cloud deployments. And, um, and also enabling new applications on the edge that weren't possible before mm -hmm. creates you know, latent value opportunities, right? So, so that's a high level value pitch, but how do we make money? Well, we charge for access to the platform, right? So, Usage. Um, Consumption? You, yeah, and value base, yeah, so it's consumption and value base, right? So it depends on the size, the scale of the deployment, right? If you're going to deploy machine learning model at a larger scale, chances are that it, it produces a lot of value, mm -hmm. right? So then we will capture some of that value in our pricing scale. So you have direct sales force then to work those deals? Exactly. Got right. it. How many customers do you have? Just curious. So we started, so the, plat, the SaaS platform uh, just launched now, right? So mm -hmm. we started onboarding, onboarding customers. We've been building this for a while. Um, we have a bunch of uh, you know, partners that we can talk about openly, like you sure. know, revenue generating partners, sure. that's what it is. Right? So you know, we work closely with Qualcomm to enable uh, Snapdragon on, on TVM, and hence mm -hmm. in our platform. Uh, we're close with AMD as well, enable you know, AMD hardware on the platform. Uh, we've been working closely with uh, two hyperscaler cloud uh, providers that <laughs> integrate I closely. Who they are. I don't know who they are, right? So they're two of them, yeah. Um, and both start with the letter A. Being, and they're being both, yeah, right, what is that? <laughs> they both start with the letter A. <laughs> um, oh, that's right. <laughs> I won't give it away. <laughs> Don't give one it away. Three, John, one please, is three, one is four. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh. No, um, and I'm uh, guessing. By and the way, we have, have and no. we have customers um, in the. We actually have early customers have been using the platform from the beginning uh, in the consumer electronics space mm -hmm. uh, in um, in Japan and you know self-driving car technology as well, and as well as some AI-first companies that actually whose mm -hmm. core value come from, the core business come from AI yeah, models. So serious, and serious them. customers. They got right. deep tech chops. Yeah. They're integrating, they see this as a strategic part of their architecture. That's what I call AI native, exactly. But now there's a several, we have several enterprise customers in line now, mm -hmm. you know, they've been talking to, of course, because now the, yeah. we launched the platform, now we're starting onboarding mm -hmm. and, and exploring, you know, uh, how we're going to serve it to, to these customers, but it's, it's pretty clear that, you know, our technology can solve a lot of their pain points right now, mm -hmm. and we're going to work with them as, as early customers who are going to be So do you sell to the future. little guys like us, would we be customers if we wanted to be? You could, absolutely, yeah. What would Just we have to do, have machine learning? folks on staff or? So here's what you'd have to do. So you, you, since you can see the booth, others can't, yeah. and nobody can see the link later, you can, <laughs> you, you can try our demo. Octo right? So you see, <laughs> you, and you should look at the Transparent AI app that's <laughs> compiled yeah. and optimized with our flow and deployed and built with our <laughs> flow yeah. uh, that allows you to get your, you imagine, do style transfer, you know, you <laughs> can get you and a pineapple and see how you look like with a pineapple texture. Well, we got a lot of transcripts and video yeah. data. So right, yeah, so yeah. you can, 
Yeah, you can right exactly. So you um, you can use that. And then there's a there's a very um, very but clear tutorial how it. to do You're it. You're not blocking me from using it. Everyone's no, it's pretty much can, democratized. You can you can try the demo and then you can you can request access to the platform. Yeah, and but you have a lot of more serious, deeper customers. Right. Uh, but you can serve anybody. What you're saying. We can serve anybody. Yeah. All right. So what's the uh, vision going forward? Because our uh, let me ask Chris. Are people not, when did people start getting the the epiphany of uh, removing the machine learning from the hardware as it was it recently, a couple years ago? Well, in, on the research side, we, um, we helped start that trend a while ago, right? I don't, need, I, didn't, I don't need to repeat that, but I think the vision that's important here, I want the audience here to, to take it away, is that there was a lot of progress being made in creating machine learning models, mm -hmm. right? So there's fantastic tools to deal with training data and creating the models and so on. And now there's a bunch of models that can solve real problems there. The question is, how do you very easily integrate that into your intelligent application? Mm -hmm. So right. Madrona Venture Group has been you know, very, um, very vocal and very investing heavily on intelli intelligent applications, both yep. end user applications as well as enablers, right? So we see an enabler of that because we, uh, it's so easy to use our flow to get a model integrated in your application that now any regular software developer can integrate that. And that's just the beginning, right? Because you know, now we have CI-CD integration to keep your models yeah. updated, to continue integrated, and then there's more downstream support for other features that you normally have in regular software you development. Know, I've been thinking about this for a long, long time, and I think this whole code, no, no one thinks about code. Like, I write code, I'm, I'm, I'm deploying it. Um, I think this idea of machine learning as code, mm -hmm. independent of other dependencies, is really like, amazing. Like, I think it's so yeah. obvious now that you say it. Um, what's the choice is now? <laughs> it's to say that, okay, I, I buy it, I love it, I'm using it. Now, what do I got to do if I want to deploy it? Do I have to pick processors? Are there verified platforms that you support? Is there a short list? Is there every piece of hardware? Great, and we, we actually can help you. I hope I'm not saying we can do everything in the world here, but we can help you with that. So here's how. You, when you, when, you when you have the model in the platform, you can actually see how this model runs on, on any instance of any cloud, by the way, so we support all the three major <laughs> cloud providers. And, and, then, and then you can make decisions. For example, um, if you care about latency, your model has to, be, has to run on at most 50 milliseconds because you want to have in yeah. interactivity. And then after that, you don't care if it's faster. All you care is that it's going to run cheap enough. So you can help you navigate. And also you can have, make it's it like, it's your tire, just automatic. It's like tire kicking in the dealer showroom. You so can right. test everything <laughs> out. You can see the simulation. Are they simulations yeah. or are they real tests? Oh no, we run all in real hardware. So we have, as I said, we support any instance of any of the major clouds. So we actually run on the cloud. But we also support some edge, a select number of edge devices today, like ARM and NVIDIA Jetsons. And we have the OctoML cloud, which is a bunch of racks with a bunch of Raspberry <laughs> Pis and, and Nvidia Jetsons, and very soon, a bunch of mobile phones there too. They can actually run on the real hardware and validate it and test it out, so yeah. you can see that your model runs uh, yeah. performant and economically enough in the cloud, and it can run on the so edge your devices you care about. you're machine learning as a service. Would that be accurate? That's, that's, that's that part of it, because we're not doing the machine learning model itself. We, you come with a model and we make it deployable and make it ready to deploy. So here's why it's important. Yes, okay. okay. So okay. Let, me, let me try. So, you, there's a, there's a, a large number of really interesting companies that do API models as an API as a service. Like you have NLP models, you have computer vision models where you call an API, an endpoint in the cloud, you send an image and you get a description for example, or you send, you know. So, but this is using a third party. Yeah. Now, if you want to have your model on your infrastructure but having the same convenience as an API, you can use our service, yeah. right? So today, chances are that if you have a model that you know that you want to do, there yeah. might not be an API for it. We actually yeah. create, automatically create the API for okay, you. Okay, so that's why I get the DevOps agility for machine learning. Exactly. It's a better description, because it's not, you're not providing the service, you're providing the service of deploying it like DevOps right. infrastructure right. as code. You're now ML as code. Yeah, it's, be it's your it's model, your API, your infrastructure, but all of the convenience yeah. of having this yeah. thing ready to go, like fully automatic, it's hands off. Because I think what's interesting about this is that it brings the craft, craftsmanship back to machine learning. Because it's a craft, I mean, let's face it. Yeah, and, l and I want human brains, which are very precious resources, yeah. mm -hmm. to focus on building those models that is going to solve business <laughs> problems. I don't want these very smart human brains figuing out how to scrub this <laughs> thing to actually get it run the right way. This should be automatic. That's why we use machine learning for machine okay, learning to so solve here, that. Here's, here's an idea for you. We should write okay. a book called The Lean Machine Learning. Because the lean startup was all about DevOps. You call it machine you know, leaning. No, never, no, that's not going to work <laughs> yet. That's not but but <laughs> you know, remember the, the, when iteration was the big mantra? Oh yeah, iterate. You know, that was from DevOps. Yeah, that, that's code right. Yeah. Allowed for you know standing up stuff fast, double down. We all know the history. What turned out, that was a good value for developers. I completely agree. And if you don't mind me uh, building on that. Point,
point, you know, something that we see uh, as, as OctoML, but we also see at Madrona as well. Um, seeing that there's a, a trend towards best in breed for each one of the stages of getting a model deployed from mm -hmm. the data aspect of curating the data and then to the model creation aspect, to the model deployment, and even model monitoring, right? So, and we have, uh, we develop integrations with all you know, the major pieces mm -hmm. of the ecosystem such that you can integrate, say, with model yeah. monitoring to go and monitor how your model is doing. Yeah just like you monitor how code is doing yeah, in yeah, yeah. deployment in the cloud. Yeah, right? it's, so. just, it's evolution, I think it's a great yeah. step. And again, I love the analogy to the mainframe. I lived during those days. I remember the monolithic proprietary and then you know, OSI <laughs> model kind of blew it away. But that OSI stack never went full stack. It yeah. only stopped at TCP IP. So yeah, I right. think the same thing's going on here. You're going to see some, some scalability around it to yep. kind of uncouple it, free yeah. it. Absolutely. And, Sustainab yeah, and sustainability and accessibility to make it run faster and make it run on any device that you want by any developer, right? So that's the tagline. Luis says, thanks for coming on. Professor, Thank you. <laughs> I didn't know you're a professor. That's great to have you on. It's a master class in, in, oh, in, right. in nice DevOps story, agility yeah. for machine learning. Thanks great. for coming on, appreciate it. Thank you very much, thank you again, all right. OctoML here on theCUBE, really important, uncoupling the machine learning from the hardware specifically. That's only going to make space faster and safer and more reliable, and that's where the whole theme of Remars is. Uh, let's see how they fit in. I'm John Furrier, theCUBE. Thanks for watching. More coverage after this short break. Thank you.